One of the most fascinating aspects of the fintech industry are the unique and diverse business models that are driving its growth. In the previous video, we covered the basics of fintech and explored some of the most successful fintech models that are driving innovation and disruption in the financial industry. We covered some popular models like the marketplace model, payment processor model, alternative risk score and lending model, neobank model, and the robo advisory model. As promised, you requested, and here is the continuation video on fintech business models so we can discuss additional unique models driving the fintech industry. Once again, whether you're an investor, entrepreneur, or just someone interested in the future of finance, this should be a useful video to give you a general perspective on the world of fintech business models. Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jeremy and if you're new here and haven't yet subscribed, please consider doing so because on this channel I speak about fintech, digital transformation, personal and career development. Now before I jump into the additional models, I want to first highlight the difference between a fintech platform and an e-commerce platform because I used examples of e-commerce platforms when I explained the marketplace model in my previous video. Now although fintech and e-commerce platforms share some similarities and overlaps in certain areas, both are two distinct types of platforms that serve different purposes. E-commerce platforms are designed to facilitate online buying and selling of goods and services, while fintech platforms focus on financial transactions and services. Now, Where they tend to overlap are in areas such as, for example, e-commerce platforms may use fintech solutions to process payments and manage transactions, while fintech platforms may also incorporate e-commerce capabilities to allow users to buy and sell financial products and services. So Shopify, Jumia, Etsy would be classified as e-commerce platforms, whereas Klarna and Afterpay would be fintech platforms that could pass for e-commerce because of their construct. Essentially, while e-commerce and fintech platforms have different primary purposes, they share some similarities and overlap in certain areas. The increasing integration of technology in both industries has led to more convergence and we can expect to see further innovation as these sectors continue to evolve. So thanks for bringing that to my attention, Peter. I appreciate the feedback. Now jumping back into the additional fintech business models, starting off firstly with blockchain and cryptocurrency models. The blockchain or cryptocurrency model has gained a lot of popularity in recent years. Blockchain is a distributed ledger technology that enables secure and transparent transactions. It operates through a decentralized network of computers where each transaction is recorded on a block and linked together in a chain, hence the name blockchain. The technology effectively eliminates the need for intermediaries and provides immutable records of transactions. Now, in practice, blockchain has been widely adopted in cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum, which are two of the most popular cryptos. And these cryptocurrencies allow users to transact directly, securely, and without the need for traditional financial institutions. They provide faster, more cost-effective cross-border payments and can enable new forms of digital assets and smart contracts. Blockchain-based fintechs typically charge transaction fees for using their platform or network. The fees are typically levied on users who perform transactions or use the services provided by the company. For example, in the case of cryptocurrency exchanges, fees may be charged for trading, depositing, or withdrawing digital assets. Examples would be Coinbase, Binance, and Ripple. The advantages of this model are that blockchain enhances security, transparency, and efficiency in transactions. And for these reasons, they are increasingly becoming integral to financial service providers because it eliminates the need for intermediaries, reduces costs, and enables peer-to-peer -peer transactions. However, blockchain and cryptocurrencies face regulatory concerns and challenges with scalability. A number of crypto exchanges have been hacked in the past, and the energy consumption associated with mining cryptocurrencies doesn't sit well with a number of people and institutions. Next is the buy now, pay later model. Now, the buy now, pay later model allows consumers to make purchases and pay for them in installments over time. Users Users can split their payments without incurring interest or fees if paid within a specified time box. The model offers an alternative to traditional credit cards and loans, and in practice, 
BNPL platforms partner with merchants to offer their services at checkout. Customers can select the buy now pay later option and the platform pays the merchants upfront while the customer repays the platform in installments. The buy now pay later companies are one of the tricky ones that can be categorized both as fintech and e-commerce platforms because they incorporate elements of both. They leverage digital platforms, automated processes and data analytics to facilitate seamless payment experiences, credit assessment and risk management which places them squarely in the fintech column. But at the same time, their services are primarily utilized during the online purchasing process and they integrate with online merchants. The blending of fintech and e-commerce elements is what distinguishes buy now pay later companies from traditional financing options or payment processors because they focus on innovative payment solutions specifically tailored to the e-commerce industry catering to the needs of both consumers and merchants. Popular examples are Klarna, Afterpay and Affirm and the advantages of this model are the flexibility and convenience it provides consumers and it can drive increased sales for merchants and boost customer loyalty. On the other hand, users may accumulate debt if they don't manage their repayments properly due to the late fees and charges and there is always the default risk that can get out of hand when unscrupulous actors try to game the system. Next is the digital and mobile wallet model. Digital and mobile wallets are platforms that enable users to store, manage, and transact with their payment information digitally. They securely store credit card details, bank account information, and other payment methods. Now, users of digital wallets can make online, in-app, and contactless payments conveniently, and in practice, they work by linking a user's payment information to their account. When making a transaction, the wallet securely communicates the necessary details to complete the payment. Typically, mobile wallets are either accessed via a USSD short code if it's a mobile money wallet or is downloaded as an application otherwise. Users fund their wallets by linking their bank accounts, transferring money from other accounts, or depositing cash at authorized locations, typically agents or branches. Some mobile wallets offer additional features to enhance the user experience, such as digital ticketing, splitting bills, or accessing personalized offers and discounts. A mobile wallet prioritize security to protect users' financial information with various encryption and authentication methods, and even employ tokenization and biometric authentication for added security. Mobile wallet providers generate revenue through various means such as fees charged to merchants or financial institutions for processing payments. They offer convenience, speed, and enhanced security compared to the traditional payment methods. So examples would be your Apple Pay, Google Pay, Samsung Pay, or mobile money. Next is the InsurTech model. InsurTech simply refers to the integration of technology into the insurance industry, providing innovative solutions and improved customer experiences. InsurTech platforms leverage data analytics, artificial intelligence, and automation to streamline insurance processes, enhance underwriting, and offer personalized policies. Now, in practice, InsurTech platforms offer digital applications allowing users to purchase insurance, manage policies, and file claims online. They may also leverage data from wearable devices and IoT devices to assess risk and offer customized policies. There are a number of advantages to the InsurTech model Models, such as enhancing efficiency, reducing cost, and providing tailored insurance solutions. It offers simplified and user-friendly experiences, faster claims processing, and improved risk assessment. Now, on the flip side, privacy concerns may arise due to the collection and use of personal data. Regulatory compliance and the need for customer education on new insurance models can also be a challenge. Now, some popular examples of InsurTech fintechs are Lemonade, Oscar Health, Root Insurance and Policy Genius. And finally, we have the crowdfunding model. The crowdfunding is a model that enables individuals and businesses to raise funds from a large number of people, typically through an online platform. Now, even though they aren't strictly categorized as fintech platforms and they usually are put under the umbrella of alternative finance or fundraising platforms, it offers an alternative to traditional fundraising methods, allowing entrepreneurs, artists, and others to access capital directly from the crowd. Now, in practice, crowdfunding platforms provide a digital space where project creators can showcase their ideas and solicit contributions from interested individuals. Contributors can pledge funds in exchange for rewards, equity, or simply as donations. The platform handles 
financial transactions between the project creators and backers, and they provide secure payment gateways that allow backers to contribute funds to projects using various payment methods such as credit cards, bank transfers, or digital wallets. Crowdfunding platforms may implement mechanisms to assess the viability and legitimacy of projects before they are listed on the platform. This can involve the due diligence processes, project evaluation, and the establishment of criteria to ensure the quality and credibility of the projects seeking funding. And crowdfunding platforms, as with most fintech platforms, are required to comply with relevant financial regulations and often require registration or licensing in the jurisdictions they operate in. The advantages of crowdfunding are that it opens up opportunities for creators who may struggle to secure funding through traditional means. It allows for validation of ideas, access to a broader investor base, and community engagement. The disadvantages are that competition can be intense on crowdfunding platforms and not all projects reach their funding requirement. Intellectual property protection and fraud risk are also considerations and popular examples would be Kickstarter, GoFundMe, and Patreon. So there are a number of ways fintechs make money from their business models. So let's highlight a few of the popular options quickly. The first is interchange fees. So when a credit or debit card is swiped, the merchant is charged a percentage of the transaction in fees. In fact, interchange fees is one of the leading revenue generators in fintech and card providing companies like Chime and Ramp in the B2B, B2C space all earn money on interchange fees. Next are subscription fees. Now these fees are quite a popular model for software as a service companies. In fintech, they are more common with personal finance management apps. Some offer a freemium model where you get some features for free, but you must subscribe to unlock more essential features. Next are payment processing and funds transfer fees. Now these are fees that fintechs take when money moves either from a consumer to a merchant or from a friend to a friend. Peer-to-peer -peer money transfer apps like Venmo and PayPal let consumers send money back and forth for free and make money once money is actually received in the app. The way it's usually structured is that the option to transfer is free when it takes a longer time but charged for instant transfers. So you essentially pay the transfer fees for the convenience. Next are trading fees. Now this is common with cryptocurrency or stock trading platforms. These platforms charge trading fees based on a tiered structure tied to the amount traded. And finally, we have interest. Now interest is a classic pricing model, but also a common way lending fintechs make money. They usually charge lower interest rates than traditional institutions, but they essentially follow the same or similar constructs. So overall, fintech models can create value for consumers and businesses by offering innovative products and services. Fintechs monetize their services by charging fees for access, value-added services, or charging premiums for their products. The pricing models can vary depending on the business model, the target market, and the competition. I hope you found this video valuable, and if you did, remember to hit the like button and leave me a comment. Have an amazing week, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.